So folks, all of these athletes, all of these citizen warriors who volunteered for their country's call, these are our best men and women. They are each of our country's consummate, selfless, quiet professionals who never have given up, no matter the odds. But most importantly, I also want all of you to understand that the wounds you see are the tip of the iceberg. If you see somebody who's missing a limb or has a scar, I want you to understand the countless surgeries that went behind that. There's some people here who are sitting in this audience who've had over 130 and 140 surgeries. That's what you can see. There's a cognitive issue. There's a vestibular issue. There's an emotional issue. There's a psychological issue. They're not just overcoming the wounds you see before you. Their families have taken on that tax. I want everybody to understand that what you see is nothing compared to what they've actually overcome just to be here, just to get in the arena, to show that they're not done, that they're not beaten. They are our country's best. When the War Games were canceled, I was definitely disappointed because everyone's hyped up, you know, all the anticipation for it, the training, um, and then to find out, like, pretty much at the last minute that it was canceled was, was highly disappointing. Um, you know, it kind of, it brings, it brings your spirit back down, but it also um, makes you stronger and want to try harder just to, you know, hopefully have it the next year, you know, so you can gain from that and you can take everything that you've learned from the actual trials and then um, take it to the next trials because at this point you have more time to train and beat all the other branches. What it means to me to represent the Air Force in the Warrior Games uh, means like honestly so much to me. Uh, the Air Force did so much for me. Just to go out there and represent your, your service, your country, and, uh, and with a group of men competing against other, other services in other nations, um, to me that was, that was like no other, no other higher um, achievement to, to go out there and do that. So it, it, means, it meant the world to me. I just want to represent SOCOM and, and bring this, uh, this program honor when we get out there and compete. To be able to represent the Marine Corps in the Warrior Games, it kind of, uh, it, it gives me, I guess, that sense of pride, of course, and being a Marine and knowing that I can still uh, provide some type of value to the Marine Corps. Representing the Air Force and the Warrior Games is about honor and redemption. And you're, you're, you're back on a team. You're, you have a mission. You have a focus. And having a mission and focus gives you an identity. And this is an honorable and a good identity. So the role of the trials um, in preparation for the games helps um, the service staff or the service departments identify those individuals that will move on to that next level and compete in the Warrior Games. The service trials also gives um, individuals an opportunity just to really see how far they've come. August 21st of 2020, I was in Joshua Tree National Park out in 29 Palms. I was stationed in 29 Palms as a Marine, and I was in a rock climbing accident. I fell 65 feet, broke my pelvis, both my feet, 
on my sternum, had a TBI, and I was in a wheelchair for three months, um, and then I was walking with crutches and then a cane. I still use the cane from day to day, but I'm mostly healed up now. I still have a lot of mobility issues. Uh, I have some issues moving on the bike, moving in the water. Most of the time I don't kick with my right leg especially. Before I had my accident and I was in the hospital and I was talking with section leaders and everybody who was coming to help me and understand like, hey, you might be going to Wounded Warrior Battalion. I didn't know it existed. Um, and the, the detachment in Torrent Palms is in my barracks that I lived in and I had no idea what it was. And so when I was able to really truly understand what this place is all about and, and what the mission statement here is, it's, it's amazing and the things that the, the War Peace staff here do for us as recovering service members is amazing. Representing the court at the Warrior Games means, means a lot. Um, as I was, I was selected for the team for 2020, but unfortunately the games were canceled. Um, we were still able to get all of the gear and there was the, um, the virtual challenge that happened in oh September. God. So we were able to compete and, and enjoy that uh, against the other services, uh, which was very entertaining and, and just a whole lot of fun because all of our fellow Marines were able to come together here at Battalion and compete against each other as well as the other, the other services. I enlisted in the Marine Corps in May of 2017. I'd say about a month or two into boot camp, I started feeling pain in my foot, but it was written off because it's boot camp and everybody's in pain. Uh, went through Marine Corps training and I got to the schoolhouse where I was forced to go to medical. And that was November of 2017 when they put me in my first walking boot. By January of 2018, it hadn't healed. They gave me an MRI, found out I had a tumor on February 1st, 2018. Spent the next 14 months trying to save my leg, sending me across the country, going to different doctors, trying to do surgeries, trying to do medications, doing infusions, all sorts of things, led to several infections and nerve damage and just chronic pain. And I finally got my amputation in April of 2019. Let's go. Let's go. Adaptive sports really just changed the entire trajectory of my life. I was at Wounded Warrior Battalion prior to my amputation, during my amputation, and obviously after. And adaptive sports is what got me out of the barracks every day. It kept me sane, I say. Um, it gave me a reason to get out of bed every single day. I had coaches to go practice with. I had a, something to work towards. Representing the Marine Corps means so much to me because not a lot of people get to do it. Not only did I go through the boot camp and the training to become a Marine, that's already hard enough itself. Then I went through this traumatic experience really, lost my leg and to come back and still compete and still medal, like that's, it's an incredible experience that very, very few people in the entire world could ever say. I just went one Marine out when he started was barely doing a bar for his his weight. And that Marine is Staff Sergeant Cordoza. He can barely get 265, if that. I mean, it might sound like a lot of weight, but he's a good guy. And it took him three years to get to where he's at now and to set a PR in the talent as well. Woo! And that's awesome. I, I think being a prior athlete and being a, being a Marine, I, I know the Marine mindset. I know uh, what they're thinking. I know their expectations and my job as a coach is to, to get in that Marine mind frame, but also let them know that it's, it's okay to fail. It's okay to come short, but give it your all. You know, as, as Marines, that's all we can do. That's all we were ever taught is to give our all. As a matter of fact, it took me about six years before I made my first Warrior game, but I kept trying. I, I never gave up. You know, I kept pushing myself. Uh, every trial, um, I got better in a, in a sport, and, um, and I just honed in on those skills and, 
and, um, and just kept improving. And, um, and then one day they said, you're going to Warrior Games. I said, oh, all right, about time, you know, but um, it, it's a process and I, and I knew that, but I, I just kept pushing, became, became better, faster, stronger, and um, just kept up the motivation. The best part of these trials for me has been being around the Marines again. Um, I'll say up at Walter Reed, it, it's of course not a very heavy Marine presence up there. Typically Marines up there are up there for a reason, they're, they're in pretty bad shape. Uh, so that, that's probably my favorite part of these trials is being able to just be around Marines again, feel like a Marine again. and. Uh, just compete against Marines because you know we're always going to bring probably the, uh, the most heated competition out there. January 23rd, 9.56 p.m. Um, of 2021. So um, got back from deployment. My wife and I, we had bought um, a house out here in Jacksonville. It was gonna be our first night sleeping in that house. Um, I was moving the mattress Wife looked at the mattress in the bed of the truck strapped down. She says, is that strapped down well enough? Being a husband, of course, my answer is, oh, it's fine. It, it'll be okay. We're just going right down the road. Sure enough, it wasn't okay. It fell out in the middle of the road, pulled up in front of the mattress. And while I was loading it back up in the bed of the truck, nobody was paying attention and drove into me. So um, I didn't realize what happened. Um, I knew I had gotten hit. I was coherent for all of it. Finally, the medics came over. Um, they got me onto the, uh, the stretcher, tourniqueted my leg. Again, all the signs were there. Didn't think anything of it. Um, Loaded me into the, uh, into the back of the ambulance. And then that's when I heard in the, the ambulance, someone in the front say, left leg amputation. Um, of course, my reaction was that of, uh, huh? But yeah, went, uh, they took me up to Greenville, uh, Vitam Medical Center up there in Greenville, and uh, then began the, the road to recovery. Just having the opportunity to represent the Marine Corps at the Warrior Games and knowing that even if I do get um, retired, uh, it's still an option for me to continue to do beyond my time on active duty. It, it probably means the most to me right now of really anything that I'm doing right now. I have rheumatoid arthritis, pretty, pretty young, 34. Uh, the pain that comes with it is overwhelming, but at, at first it was, it was horrible. Now I see it coming and I know what to, to kind of like calm down, but people take for granted being able to open a bottle of water. People take for granted being able to hold a spoon and being able to, to cook something. And then I also have um, postural orthostatic tachycardian syndrome, POTS for short. And if I stand for a prolonged time, or if my heart rate goes above a certain, certain rate, my blood pressure drops and I pass out. So even cooking, taking hot showers, little things that you would never think that, especially me, I was like, I never thought I was gonna be in that situation. Start, press, wrap. Lift is good. When I uh, did my first trials, it was 2020, I was really at that point of like we still hadn't found out what was really going on. My medicine wasn't right. Um, I was having more bad days than good. And just that two weeks that I spent in California was like, it was just like, okay, I'm actually capable of doing more. And it gave me motivation. If you feel incomplete, you feel that like you're not, you weren't capable of 
staying in the Marine Corps especially, you feel defeated, this is a chance for you to like prove to yourself that you're actually capable of doing things because it's humbling. Sorry. It just gives you a chance to, like I was, I was given a chance to see that I was still capable of accomplishing something. It made me realize that the time I did do, it's the, the time that I was able to give back. Every time I do the trials is extremely humbling, especially when I see when I see some of these kids, I say kids because I'm older, but <laughs> some of these kids doing what they're doing and it's just amazing. July 12th, 2020, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, in a parking garage specifically. <laughs> so I was working on my vehicle and uh, looked away for about half a second while I had a jack slip out from underneath my transmission and it fell and cut my hand off. So it led me to the Naval Hospital Emergency Room there on Camp Lejeune, not too far from the Wounded Warrior Barracks. And uh, from there, they, I mean, I was the only calm one in the room at the very moment, you know. They were like, ah. But eventually everybody else calmed down. They took x-rays and stuff like that. And they kept calling other hospitals to see if they had hand specialists on staff. But apparently people like to get their limbs lobbed off or pulled off on Sundays. No matter how bad I've got it, somebody's got it worse. So, and, you know, especially being here at the Marine Corps Trials and Warrior Games, you'll see a lot of service members and retirees, they're just as broken, if not more broken, than I am. So that kind of gives me some perspective into the challenges that I face and what challenges that I could have faced had something else happened to like these other guys. Rowers, take the handles, follow the prompts. Let's go, let's go! Adaptive sports has been absolute bliss for me anyway. And you know, laser focus has always been something that you try to achieve, whether you're a civilian, active duty military, retired military. Everybody wants focus and on certain aspects in life. I'm not saying everything because you don't want to hyper fixate on everything, but when you're dialed in, like you're shooting archery, I mean, archery is a good time, but when I'm shooting, I'm not thinking about my injury. And it's just, it's awesome because I get out of my mind and I'm just in the zone. I'm right there in that space and that time. It's nothing else besides me and in this case, a pellet rifle and a target downrange. That's all it is. Middle of 2014, uh, I was working active duty on Malmstrom Air Force Base, and um, I was diagnosed with AML leukemia. Uh, first round of chemo, um, I had a Hickman port put in my chest, and about oh, a week later, I had an infection. Um, and what chemo does is uh, chemo kills your immune system. You have new, no immunity to fight off any infection, and I got an infection. It put me in the ICU. Uh, I was on life support with complete organ failure. Um, 18 days rolled around, uh, I finally woke up. Wasn't supposed to, but here I am. Um, I lost 60 pounds in about 18 days. Adaptive sports uh, has definitely um, 
it's, uh, it's been a lifesaver and it's been able to uh, help me focus more on um, my form and technique and all these different sports that you wouldn't do on a daily basis. Um, and then knowing I'll be competing against other athletes of my caliber um, and they're not, you know, they're no, they're no slumps. They're going to be coming hard. They're going to be gunning for me and so I got to be ready. Uh, so mentally I know that I got to work hard and that helps me, um, gives me a goal. Sit. I believe 100% that adaptive sports save lives. Just being here this last week at trials, I've heard numerous people just say how alive they feel after these these events. They, they feel so much better because um, they were in a, such a dark place, and you don't know, you can't see on the outside. They they hold this they hold this in. When you bring them here to a camp or to trials. Um, it it op opens them up again. Uh, they're able to feel the competition again, but this time with athletes who are going through similar stuff, and we're all going through stuff. So if, if, if you're on the cusp, on the line, just take a step forward and come to one of these camps, come to a trial, um, you're gonna love it. I didn't think I had a place here when I started because I do have a TBI, PTSD, things like that. I have more invisible wounds. Um, so when I see the amputees and I see, you know, Christian Vega and people like that, like I'm like, oh, do I have a place here? Um, I bond with those people the most, honestly. I think all of us have a warrior spirit at heart and that's what brings us here is we've all been down and out and we picked ourselves right back up and we just kept going. You know, we never stopped, we never quit. And I think that's why the bond here is so intense because we all know what it's like to be at our low and how to get out of that dark place. I don't think I would be able to attend if my husband was not with me. He is my caregiver, he's my provider, um, he steps in for me um, and he knows exactly what I'm feeling and when and he knows when something is overwhelming me. Having him here with me and even my children has given me a sense of comfort and that is my family and also the Air Force, the AFW-2 is my family. For me to represent the Air Force at the Warrior Games was an amazing opportunity. I started out as somebody who didn't even know they could do more than one sport and I tried everything and there was new events that I even um, meddled in with the support of my team, with the support of my coaches, um, the support of my husband and my children. Um, I pushed beyond so many limits that I thought I had and I've seen so many of my fellow teammates do the same thing and I want to make them proud. Five, four, three, two, one. I have uh, PTSD from uh, uh, MST, so for me, I lost connection with my body, with who I am, uh, the security of just the world around. I lost faith in people. I lost a lot of trust. Um, some of my obstacles include just like um, my brain will trigger, and when I'm in that mode, I will, I can forget my face, my name, where I'm at. I've um, come home, I know, I know it's my house, but it's like coming into a hotel room because there's no emotional attachment. I just know like deep down, oh, I know I love my parents, but sometimes there's just no emotional attachment. Adaptive sports in AFW2 actually start chipping away at that because they've given me a safe place to trust and there's just many times where just like, the only times I can decompress is with other athletes. <laughs> <laughs> it 
If you're ready to end isolation, if you feel like you're ready to make the first step in healing, adaptive sports is for you. If you feel like you're isolated and scared and you don't know how to start healing, adaptive sports is for you. If you have absolutely no plan and you're just scared and you're not sure or you feel like as many military or injured people feel like your wound isn't enough or your wound isn't serious, adaptive sports is for you. It is a gateway to healing no matter where you are in your walk and struggles. You will find a brother, you will find a sister, you will find a community, you will find a father and a mother and a mentor and a brother and a sister. It is a great way to connect people, understand your bubble, but it's also a way to expand your bubble. And we can't fight what's in our heads by ourselves. We need people. And when you first start going through this struggle, it's impossible to understand that you need someone. So just reach out, try the sports. There's so many, and it doesn't matter if you are category six open and there's absolutely nothing wrong with your body, or if you're missing all of your limbs, they will find a way to adapt the sport that you want to do to you. And there, I have seen so many amazing athletes, and they are athletes regardless of their status. Adaptive sports is for everyone, and it's just a wonderful way to heal. Yeah, I think the, the best part about um, SOCOM, Warrior Games, Train Up Camp for me is is just seeing the the people and the support that that exists, um, both other athletes and and even more importantly the the staff and the coaches um, and the dedication that that they bring. Uh, it's it's a little overwhelming. You know, everybody has different motivations for why they do things, but just being able to go around to the different sports and see uh, the different coaches, and you know, a lot of them are familiar from the last couple of years, uh, familiar faces, and getting to see them in person again is, is probably my favorite thing or the best thing about this camp. The, the injury that technically um, qualifies me to be in the SOCOM uh, Care Coalition in the Warrior Games was uh, a parachute accident in 2014. Uh, my parachute didn't didn't open all the way. I had uh, massive twists, um, and I was falling faster than I should have been, and I hit tarmac, uh, and I shattered my foot. Uh, so broke uh, bones in my foot and then broke bones in my ankle and then uh, couldn't really do anything, couldn't pin anything together because the bone fragments are so small. Try and keep shoulder blades tight and try and get your stomach up as high as you can. I've never competed in a Warrior Games for uh, the Military Adaptive Sports Program. Uh, I started in 2020 uh, at a selection and training camp. Uh, and then we flew back home and that's when COVID happened and uh, everything's been canceled uh, since then. The 2020 and then the 21 games uh, were both canceled. So I've been to some training camps. Uh, we did some virtual camps. The, the, uh, the Care Coalition folks put on some stellar um, virtual training sessions last year when when uh, COVID restrictions uh, prohibited us from from coming together, but um, so yeah, I've done a lot of train ups, done a lot of virtual train ups, um, but haven't been able to compete yet. So hopefully, this fall, um, this summer, in 22, will will work out. That looks better.
Being part of the Military Adaptive Sports Program means so much to me. I never would have thought it would mean so much, but um, I guess seeing each individual's stories and seeing them come, they've been through so much and yet they're here and they want to train and learn more about the sport that I know about. So I have had to make some adaptations to getting the athletes onto the bench um, or even just creating their program. So when I first get to meet the athlete, I do ask, do you have any injuries, any disability I need to be aware of for the, this event in general? Um, so if there's a, a head injury or say an amputation, an arm amputation, um, we kind of work around, okay, how can we get you on the bench comfortably and safely? Also, how do we get you to actually bench properly with the right form and again safely. Safe, safety really is key here. The best part of this SOCOM Warrior Games training camp for me has been finally being at a venue in person with the athletes, truthfully. Um, I had no idea how much I was going to miss that when we had those virtual events, which were also great. So being with each athlete, meeting each person, some are returning that I am aware of and, and familiar with, and then some are brand new athletes and getting to meet them, getting to know if what their disability is, if they have one and, and how we can work together. And I, I feel like this event is really what everybody needed to prepare for the Warrior Games coming up. August 16th, 2013, uh, I was a senior medic on uh, ODA 7434. Uh, we were conducting combat operations in Kandahar, Afghanistan. Um, we were driving down a main supply route to conduct a, uh, a combat operation. And um, out of nowhere, um, an insurgent with uh, a suicide vest um, came up to my um, wheel, my front left wheel, because I was the driver. Uh, I saw him, I moved away, and he followed me, and uh, I ended up coming off the, um, the road. Uh, I got back on the road, but I overcompensated, and the, um, the vehicle flipped. And it flipped about four times. On the first flip, my driver's side door broke off, and then when we when we pretty much landed, the, uh, the vehicle and, and the uh, road had crushed my left hand. Um, my team sergeant, who was with me, unbuckled himself, put a tourniquet on, called over my uh, junior medic. He saw that I was uh, stuck. He was like, Ivan, I got to cut your hand off. And I was like, just, just get me out of here. He took out his trauma shears and cut what was left of my hand and they pulled me out. So the SOCOM Military Adaptive Sports Program has played another role in my recovery. It's given me a, a sense of purpose again. Um, now that I've come off the teams, there was a point where I was like, wow, what am I going to do? And the, mil the Military Adaptive Sports Program has given me a reason has given me uh, a reason to continue to to train to stay healthy to push through um, and just stay active that's the most important thing for me is just staying active activity is a big part of my mental health and that that competition that competitive feeling um, brings me back alive if you will about a year and a half after my injury um, I conducted my first uh, airborne operation and then five years after that, I conducted my first uh, military freefall operation. So I've had incredible support from all my commanders and senior enlisted advisors. Uh, they're like, Ivan, whatever you want to do, we're there for you. Um, and um, it's just been an incredible experience. You know, my family has been through a lot, but we got through it. <clears throat> we got through it. And uh, every day when I wake up in the morning, it's a second chance to get better. There's days where I don't want to get up, but there's that voice in my head that says, hey, somebody needs to see you. Because there's people out there that are, you know, on the fence. And if they can see a guy like me that can persevere and get through this, that might give them the inspiration that they need to be like, you know what, if he can do it, I can do it. 
So that's all I want to do is just, just uh, inspire people to, to never quit on themselves, that no matter what situation they're in, they're going to get through it. You know? And if they need help, all they got to do is ask and I'm there. Adaptive sports has helped me in the sense of when I wake up, uh, that's, there's something I want to do every day now. Uh, before, usually when I wake up, just do my regular PT or sometimes none. Uh, now every time, so my, our routine is when we wake up, drop off the kids to school and then go straight to the pool and the gym and swim for about an hour and a half or two, or two hours. And then now we added runs with it. I'm trying to add uh, rowing and cycling uh, as soon as I get my equipment and I like it because it's, like I said it's it keeps me active. So Kuki had been a different person. He learned how to become more focused and um, he used to have like short fuse and get mad at everything since he started sports. He's learning how to channel all of those frustration, all of his anxiety and worries, and um, it gives him a purpose to just go on every day. Then, just like he said, then wor worrying and sitting down in front of the TV and possibly hurting himself at some point. So that's one thing that I am so afraid of. When I heard him said that he wanted to take his life because of depression, I'm like. I didn't even know that you ever thought about that one, but when we were at the counselor's office that he actually opened up that one and I, I was just I I didn't want I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how to feel that he would say that. But since the beginning he joined the adaptive sport, it made him a little bit more less of that person that feel sad and worried about things that all of these pains and aches will never go away because he's learning how to adapt. So anyone that is hesitant on joining an adaptive sport, I would tell them to just do it because I was once that person. Um, when it was introduced to me, I said, there's no way I'm gonna do it because I'm not an athlete, I'm not a runner. I don't like doing all those things. I just, I just said no. But when I actually did it, I saw how much progress and how it helped me mentally and physically. And I would advise anyone to get up and at least try it. What it means to participate in the War Games to me is it's a great recovery program, and um, it's really good for you know the wounded, ill, and the injured. And I would suggest anyone that's dealing with anything like depression, PTSD, things like that, or if you think you don't have anyone to talk to, this is definitely the place to go because we're all a team. We're all um, experiencing um, different yet similar situations. And here you're gonna gain brotherhood, sisterhood, um, in the word games. Warrior games matter because, you know, these are young men and women that made a promise to the American people that they would literally put their lives on the line to deliver the freedoms that every one of us gets to enjoy every day. And you know, unfortunately, sometimes they get hurt. And this is only a fraction of what we can do for our injured veterans. Um, and you know, if it, if it gives them the happiness that uh, they had in the uh, military, I say, why not? I think I'm definitely a better coach these days. Um, yeah, definitely think I'm a better coach these days. Uh, become, uh, staying an athlete in school is uh, a little trickier, um, trying to manage my schedule, but it's fun to bring my gun and my uh, bow down here and get some practice time in on the range with the athletes and kind of apply my knowledge to uh, what they're missing. And uh, it's been very beneficial for both of us. Well, I know a common theme among the athletes is that they're still angry at their situation, whatever it may be. And getting through and over that anger is a, a huge hurdle 
um, when even trying to apply it in everyday life, let alone competitive sports. And uh, one of the words that Max Roan told me on my first year on the team was you could either be the uh, life of your own pity party or you could do something about it. And I think I tell that to every athlete I've had ever since then because it's, it's a God's honest truth. You could sit there and whine and complain or you could change the circumstances around you and make your life better. We're seeing adaptive sports come out in um, all aspects of the community, not just the uh, veteran uh, community. Uh, I think for the first time uh, when I went uh, to the mountains uh, to go snowboarding, I saw adaptive snowboarding, adaptive skiing for the first time. I was like, wow, I didn't even know you had adaptive snowboarding, adaptive skiing. How do I get into that? Because I know there's another, other adaptive sports, so why can't I get into that? Um, Invictus Games, I think that these opportunities are out there and that, you know, all you got to do is just try out. The best part of the Warrior Games for me is seeing the smiles on everyone's face, the excitement, seeing the enthusiasm, and recognizing and seeing the sense of accomplishment when somebody completes an event. It's very emotional for me because of the fact that that individual has overcome something. And then it inspires me. It makes me want to say, oh, I think you need to get up off the couch sometime and maybe take a walk around the track. And so because you feel like if they can do it, why can't I?